My name is Susan Shirk, and I'm the editor of Changing Media, Changing China, a collection of articles about the changing media environment in China. The book is about this amazing change from uh, pure party propaganda uh, to a commercial media and internet in China. Of course, the newspapers and television stations and internet sites uh, are still censored to a certain extent by the party authorities, but they are also commercial. They are competing with one another for advertising and for audiences, which means that they want to write stories, exciting stories that people want to read. And the leadership of China has actually encouraged this because although it could be a threat to them if it helps organize protest activity against the government, on the other hand, they need the media to help tell them what is going on at the grassroots, what is going on, uh, what sorts of bad things local officials have done to help them monitor uh, the local officials so that they can solve problems before they create large-scale unrest. The party has been surprisingly effective at blocking, filtering according to keywords, but also uh, relying on human beings, monitors at all the key platforms and websites whose job it is to take off uh, news or postings that include keywords that are considered too dangerous. And some of it is actually pretty silly. Um, but uh, it has been successful, but it's not perfect. It's not airtight. So what happens is between the period that something is posted and the time that it is censored, it can be circulated very widely. And that's why the microblogs, the Weibo that have appeared on the scene in just the last year are so powerful. Because with one button, a person, a microblogger, can forward a story to millions of people. And uh, that's why the current front on the party's war against the internet is the microblog. So the interesting story really is the ambivalence that China's leaders and senior officials feel toward the media. We only hear one side of the story in the United States. We hear all about the censorship, which certainly is important to try to still control the content. But the other side of the story is how the Communist Party is using the media in order to maintain itself in power uh, and learn about problems at the basic level.